already? Lisa, you can go and share your screen. Right, I think we're ready to go, Lisa, whenever you are. Okay. Thanks for coming, everybody, by the way. This is going to be the best workshop you've ever seen in your entire life. All right, can everyone, can everyone see the screen? Heck yeah, let's do it. All right. Um, You're trying to present. Yeah. It's in the top right next to the share button. Okay. All right, here we go. All right. <laughs> uh, okay, that was a rough start, but um, I promise the workshop won't be rough. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our workshop, Introduction to AWS. All right. Um, before we dive in, let me ask you, have you ever experienced website crash during your Black Friday shopping? If you're not a big shopper, have you ever seen the computer website crash on the night that homework is due on, you know, UT, UT stat, um, stat computer lab or our registration site go down because uh, during the, on the day that class schedule is released. Um, all of these cases would be an example of a server's server crashing due to um, its inability to handle a large amount of virtual visitors. So you may wonder what could businesses do to solve this problem to improve their website? The answer is, oh, well, there's an example of website crashing. The answer is cloud computing. Cloud computing is the on-demand delivery of IT resources by, via the internet. It allows users to um, access access tech services such as computing power, storage databases um, from a cloud provider instead of buying the whole thing. Um, if you were to buy the whole thing, uh, you'll be able to um, maintain it and run it just however, however you want. And, um, but you will be responsible for um, all the costs that go into maintaining the server. So um, that would be an example of on-premise, um, on-premise website, and that there you are responsible for everything. But cloud computing um, takes that responsibility away, and it, it lets you share the responsibility with other users using, using the same cloud computing system. Um, but it does come at a cost, because if, if you own your own thing, you get to, um, Although there are costs, you get you have to pay for your um, own server. You have to pay for you um, pay to like hire the tech guys and everything like that. Um, but you get to control everything. Whereas on cloud computing, you won't be able to do that. Um, someone else takes away your responsibility as well as some of that freedom you have of owning the um, server hundred percent. But um, cloud cloud computing system is worth it because there are so many benefits to using it. Um, one, your capital expense is exchanged for a variable expense. You And um, there are large economies of scale because you share that cloud cost with other users that are using the cloud. And there's also no need to guess um, how many people will be using the server um, and things of that sort because you only pay for what you need. And as I mentioned, it's cost efficient. 
And you can, when, if you use the cloud computing system, you get to um, share your website um, and release it to everyone in, around the globe, essentially. So cloud computing is definitely worth it. And as you can see on the slide, um, AWS, which we'll be covering today, as well as um, Microsoft at Azure, uh, GCP, and um, those are examples of cloud providers. All right, so let's get to the real business, AWS. What is AWS? AWS is shortened for Amazon Web Services. Um, it is a secure cloud platform that is used globally. It is used by 50% um, of the global market and 80% of Fortune 500 companies host their infrastructure on AWS. Um, as mentioned before, um, at the beginning of the session, AWS would be a great start to improve your business website and your business um, and the servers that your business run on. Um, it allows improvement in the performance of business virtual sites without needing to start the whole thing over. Um, it is also, it, it is very popular because it is cost efficient. You pay as you go. Um, it's a, it runs on per hour billing uh, or micro billing. Um, and it's really accessible. You, you know, Amazon, everybody uses it. Um, it's trustworthy. Um, and trust is trustworthy because it is stable. And Amazon is a vendor that everyone trusts. And the sign-up process is very simple. Um, and speaking of sign-up process, if you um, go ahead and make your account right now, we can get to um, we can um, do the demo more easily without um, needing to spend more time on it. So if you could go ahead and start on that, that'll be really helpful later on. All right, and there are three types of cloud computing system. IAA. IAAS, which stands for Infrastructure as a Service, PAAS, which serves, which stands for Platform as a Service, SAAS, uh, which stands for Software as a Service. Um, and these are built on top of each other. Um, I, infrastructure as a Service is at the bottom, um, and it's the largest, um, largest sector of cloud computing. And um, as for admins, um, the, some of the examples would be AWS, um, Azure, and it provides access to networking features, computers, and their data storage space. And PAAS is built on top of um, a IAAS, uh, and as for developers. Um, and some of the examples would be AWS Elastic Beanstalk, and it removes the need for your organization to manage the underlying infrastructure. It, it saves you a lot of time. And software as a service is for customers. And it includes Gmail, um, Office 365. It's the product that's already built and customers don't need to worry about how it's run and things like that. Um, it's already taken care of. Um, it is a completed product that is run and managed by the service provider. These are some of the web services, most popular web services um, within AWS. Um, AWS e EC2 it is the most popular, the most used um, service. Amazon RDS, um, AWS Direct Connect, Amazon EBS, Amazon S3, Elastic Load Balancing, um, Route 53, VPC, and Elastic IP. Some of these we'll cover soon, right here. <laughs> So, yeah, common services. Uh, so AWS offers a lot of services like in the, excuse me, in the hundreds. Um, so, but you don't need to know all of them. Some of them are definitely way more important than others. Um, for example, EC2 here is the most popular service by far. And it's basically just ask Amazon to give you a computer and then you can access that computer from your own computer. Um, that's the one that everybody likes to use, uh, where they have an easy way of just buying an extra computer. Uh, virtual private cloud basically says, give me a Wi-Fi network. Um, elastic load balancing means, okay, scale everything I need for my new computer and my new network. Uh, S3 is the one that we're going to be demoing very soon, which is basically like Google Drive, except on AWS. 
Uh, auto scaling is basically, uh, if you noticed earlier today when our website was broken, it was an auto scaling problem because we didn't have auto scaling set up so it couldn't handle all of the people that were coming to the website at the same time. Uh, relational database service basically is get me a database and Route 53 is basically manage my URLs for me. So a lot of these services basically are meant to just make things easier for you. Uh, and that's exactly why AWS was built and why people would ever want to use it. Uh, all right, and I think next is my demo, right, Lisa? Right. Cool, all right, well then let's just jump right into that. Uh, can I start sharing? Sure. Uh, so what I'll be demoing today, by the way, is the S3 service, which as I mentioned earlier, is just like Google Drive, but on AWS. Um, so let's start with a quick demo. Um, what I've done is I've opened this uh, this text editor app on a Mac, um, and I'm going to make a, a quick test site. Actually, I should make a new one. What is it called? Text edit. Uh, let's make a new text document. Um, okay, what do I want to put on my website? Put Hey, yo, what's up? It's your boy, Ansh. Let's check the chat real quick. What's AWS? Uh, yeah, you missed that part of the workshop, Ellen, but we'll, we'll go back and uh, explain it in a bit. Uh, hey, yo, what's up? It's your boy, Ansh, on AWS. Hi, learn about people. Cool, all right. Uh, now what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to save this as a test website. Uh, and the important step here is that you want to save it as a web page, as an HTML document. Um, if you're doing this on Windows, then all you have to do is write .html at the end of the file, and it'll save it like that for you. Um, but anyway, you save it as a thing. Oh, did I save it in the right place? Okay, whatever. Uh, cool. And then now I'm going to shift over to my other screen. Now what we're going to do is we are going to actually put the website on AWS. Uh, so let's see here, what did I say? All right, if I double click my test website file and pull it up in my browser, I can see this is what the website will look like. But right now, this website is only on my own computer, right? The goal is to make it so that anybody in the entire world can access my very fancy, very high effort website. Um, so that's what we're gonna do now. Uh, the first thing we have to do, of course, is log into the AWS console. Um, also, by the way, guys, don't worry about following along for now. You can go back and watch the recording to this later. Um, but there's a couple steps regarding AWS setup that I didn't want to force you guys to go through, like giving your credit card information. Um, so you can worry about this during the actual hackathon part of the event. But anyway, uh, let me go ahead and log in with my account. Oh, God, I hate this shit, dude. Why do they make us do this? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. What the fuck? Okay, who wants to help me with this? <laughs> okay, that's right, right? Okay, all right, all right, there we go. All right, uh, as you can see here, as I mentioned earlier as well, there's plenty of services on AWS, all of which do crazy things. Um, but the only one we need to worry about for now is S3. So you can just search S3 and it'll pop right up. Cool, uh, again, this is like Google Drive, but on AWS. So uh, the first thing we need to do in order to start uploading stuff is to create a bucket. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, let's call it the Learnathon bucket. Uh, we're going to uncheck the public access stuff. And the reason we're doing this is because we want everyone to be able to access our bucket, right? We want everyone to be able to visit our website. So we actually do want public access in our bucket. Uh, and then we just go ahead and create it. Cool, and then you can see it popped up right here. All right, now now it just looks like Google Drive. All you have to do is upload your website. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, save it on here and then hit upload. Cool, if everything is green, it means it succeeded. And now you have uh, your website on here. Um, if you click on your website, it'll actually give you this link to it. Uh, and so that should be it, we're done, right? Nope, it looks like we're not done because what this website did is that it's giving us this access denied error. Um, the reason it's doing that is because we technically haven't finished our bucket configuration yet. Um, AWS likes to be very careful in terms of what it allows people to access. 
So it doesn't want just anyone to be able to access your bucket information, even if I say I want everyone to be able to access it. Um, so there's actually a couple more steps that we need to go through here. Uh, let's return to our bucket, uh, our Google Drive looking view and go to permissions. All right, this bucket policy is what we're interested in. Um, this is going to be the hardest part of the entire workshop, um, but it's not too complicated. Um, you need to open our handy dandy ultimate hackathon starting guide at freetailhackers.com slash UHSG. If you are watching this on YouTube, then this will be linked in the description. Uh, just go to the cloud section. And then if you scroll to the bottom, we have a some code link. And then there's an S3 example policy. Cool. And then all you need to do is copy this file. Control C and Control V. Oh, edit. And Control V. And then here where it says bucket name here, you just swap out and put your own bucket name. Make sure you type this bucket name exactly uh, as you typed it when you created the bucket up here, otherwise it will not work. Uh, provide external, okay, cool, save changes. All right, if you've got your bucket policy, there's only one last thing you need to do. You just gotta go to properties. Uh, all right, and then right here, static website hosting, uh, you just need to enable this. Uh, and here you just need to type in the name of the document that you are hosting your website through. So it seems like a lot of stuff, but you really have to use that to get around AWS's weird permissions nonsense. Uh, and now if we go back to this web page and we refresh, boom, I've got my website. Now, if I did this correctly, it means everyone here should also be able to access the website. So if we open, if I send this link in chat, are people able to access it or am I just like, am I just bad? It works. Heck yeah. See, see, uh, okay. So, I mean, I am an AWS certified professional. So I guess I'm just really good at AWS is what that means. Um, but I mean, look, it's only been 20 minutes. Half of that time was Lisa talking about stuff. So I've worked on this for like 10 minutes and now you have a website running and you can, I don't know, make cool stuff. Like, uh, let me just give you an example of a cool website that people make. Um, this is a website somebody made to review video games, for example. Um, for, I don't know who made this. It, it must've been a really good web developer. Um, but I mean, it's really easy to create these websites and show them to a bunch of people. Um, and I hope you guys will consider making use of this uh, in your actual hackathon projects. And now back to Lisa's presentation. That was actually it, Yance. Yeah, that's you. it. <laughs> well, that's it, okay, cool. Um, well, that, that's the entire demo. Uh, that's how you make a website. Uh, thank you all for your very kind words in the chat. Uh, I am indeed a robot. And at this point, we will now take any questions. So Did do I have you have... have... Sorry, go ahead. Okay, uh, somebody asked in the chat, did you have to pay? I... So that's a, that's a great question. Uh, I did not have to pay for this specific service. So what AWS does is that it, it, you will have to pay based on how many times people access your website, but you have to pay like three cents for every 10,000 accesses. So like, it doesn't really matter for small time websites like ours. Um, however, AWS does require that you input your credit card information beforehand because they like to trick people into, uh, into, charge, into charging their own cards uh, when using services. Uh, what I can guarantee you is as long as you're following what I did in the demo today, you will not pay a cent. So don't worry about it. Do you need any extra steps to connect a database like MongoDB or Postgres and stuff? Great question. Um, so what I displayed today uh, was very simple. And the reason was that it was only a static website. So all I had was that single file and that was my entire website. Um, however, that's, uh, there's a difference between static and dynamic websites. Dynamic websites are the ones that access databases or other servers. Um, the method that I displayed today does not support dynamic website hosting. 
Um, in order to use that, to do that, you need to use the ECT service that Lisa and I were talking about earlier. Um, and we have other videos on that if you're, if you're curious. Um, that one actually will cost you money. Of course, any other questions? I think Anna, you had one. Maybe. My question was the same. Okay, cool, good stuff. Uh, any, any last questions? Uh, yes, uh, as Orion says, please fill out the Google form. Uh, Orion, what's our secret word? What's our password this time? Kermit, I thought we already used Kermit. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> oh wait, I was just going off the, the spreadsheet. I mean, we can use like another word if y'all want. I'm, I'm fine with using Ancha's dumb. That's totally okay. Getting roasted here as well. I see. What else is new? Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, either, to break either one is fine. Um, Kermit or Ancha's dumb, whatever works. All right. Any other questions? All right. I hope this. Um, oh, one, one last question. Uh, Carla asks, what is a bucket? Um, honestly, great question. Uh, the way AWS pitches it is just like a bucket in which to put your objects. Um, and what that means for you is that it's basically a small Google Drive. Um, the difference, uh, the reason they have buckets though, is so that you can control settings for the entire bucket. For example, if you wanted to make a bucket of objects that was just public, so objects that could be accessed from anywhere, you could do that by changing the bucket settings rather than having to go in and change every single object settings. Um, but yeah, I mean, for hosting a website, you'll probably just want to have like one bucket for your website. Cool, 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 cool. Any last questions? All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the YouTube stream. Um, oh wait, I can't do that because I'm not the host. Orion, can you end the YouTube stream?